Hey guys, welcome back to The Crafty Couple. Today we've got four Dollar Tree DIYs. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up and let us know in the comments which one's your favorite. For our first project, we're going to use three of these square glasses from Dollar Tree and this decorative sand in the color black. This is probably going to be one of the easier projects that we do today. All we're going to do is take three of these bags and pour one bag into each glass container. After pouring the sand, we can put in the greenery that we're using. This is some greenery that we had from Ikea, and this is from Dollar Tree. Either one will work and looks really great. We decided to go with the greenery from Ikea since we didn't want to cut this greenery. We were using it for other projects, but if you do use the Dollar Tree, I would recommend cutting it a little bit shorter. And the greenery that we're using from Ikea was a little bit more expensive. I believe it was right around $5. We ended up using two of them. So you definitely don't have to use this. Um, you can use the Dollar Tree method and that's going to be a lot cheaper for you. However, we really liked how this greenery from Ikea turned out. For this project, you're going to need one windmill from Dollar Tree. And we are going to spray paint it with the antique pewter Rust-Oleum spray paint. Use pliers to pry up just one of the sides and you can get the chain off and then bend the welcome sign just back and forth and it'll come off. Then for the base, you will need 12 of the tumbling tower blocks from Dollar Tree and you will glue them together like you see here. And then glue all those pieces together as well. If there's a little bit of hot glue sticking out, just grab a flathead screwdriver or a razor and just go over the top and it should come off. This is what it looks like after the Rust-Oleum spray paint and we are going to go in with antique wax from Waverly and Waverly chalk paint and the color ink to distress it. The sponges that I always use are actually bath sponges from Dollar Tree and I just rip them apart. They seem to work really well for this type of stuff. I went around all the edges with the antique wax and then after that I went in with the color ink and distressed it a little bit more. Once the Jenga blocks are done being spray painted, we are going to distress them just like we did with the windmill. On the insides where we are going to hot glue, I would recommend wiping off the excess wax so that the hot glue will stick. But you would take the windmill and you will glue it to one of the sides and then you will take the other stack of Jenga blocks and hot glue it on top. For our next project, we're going to be creating a wood planter and we're going to start by using these 6x8 canvas frames. Now I did get some inspiration from a planner I saw, I believe it was on Ikea's website and it was a lot bigger though, it was an outdoor one so I thought it would be fun to recreate it and do it on a much smaller scale. Go ahead and remove the canvas from the frames. To start we're going to use these craft sticks that come in a pack of 60 and what I'm doing is just cutting it right at the top where the curve starts to straighten out on the stick. And we're going to use four of these for each corner of the planner. 
after cutting the first one, you can go ahead and use that as a template and line it up with the other sticks and cut where needed. Now to cut them, all I'm using are a pair of regular scissors. These actually cut very easily and these craft sticks are from Dollar Tree as well. I didn't really do any real hard measurements when creating this. I just cut at the top where it started to curve and then when gluing these ones on, you just want to glue it on the very corner and then give it a little bit of room at the top. As you can see, it's not flush with the canvas frame. It does stick up just a little bit. Now we want to create the base for our planter. We can go ahead and use our other canvas frame and start gluing on the craft sticks. I ended up using eight for the base. Some of them may hang over the edge a little bit. That's fine, you can go ahead and use a razor like this and cut them off. They will come off very easily. Now that our base is complete, we want to go ahead and glue it to the rest of our planter box. I ended up measuring an inch and a half from the bottom and gluing there. For the rest of the wood sticks that go all the way around the planter, again I didn't measure to any specific size, I just laid them out to where I thought they looked good on the box and then from there I made my line to cut at the top and then once I had my template again I just lined it up on the rest of the sticks and cut all the rest of them. For the longer sides of the planter I ended up using 9 sticks and then for the shorter side I ended up using 7. For this end piece, you want to make sure that it's lined up on the very end with the other longer sticks. That way there's no gap. Once you've completed all four sides, we can move on to staining or painting. We ended up using this dark walnut stain and went around the whole thing. To finish our planter, we can go ahead and place our greenery or flowers. We ended up using these picks from Dollar Tree. I thought they looked really pretty. Uh, very impressed with these actually. Uh, you can find similar ones at Walmart for just a little bit more. I ended up using eight of these and loved how it turned out. For this lantern, I wanted more of a solid base, so I grabbed one of these just square decor pieces from Dollar Tree, and then here I have the 12 inch dowels that I'm going to cut down to 8 inches and put them in all four of the corners. Once all of them are cut, you will put just a little bit of hot glue in the corner and then grab one of the dowels and just stick it in the corner and hold it until it's dry. Then we're going to grab four of the six inch dowels and measure the gap in between each of the dowels and that's how long you will cut all of them. Then just add little dots of hot glue and attach it on top. The lengths in between will vary a little bit so just put the dowel up to the edge and mark where you need to cut it and cut each individual one. Now it's time for the top. You'll grab 
the six inch dowel once again and I cut them to five and one fourth inch. And then the easiest way to attach them is to hot glue opposite corners and then touch them at the top and add some hot glue so they have something to lean on. Then add the dowel to the last corner and make sure that they're all even at the top. Then I added a bead on top from Dollar Tree and it's the largest size. I spray painted everything with the Krylon gloss black. For the little hoop at the top I'm using this floral wire and I wrapped it around one of the painting containers and it made a really nice circle and then I'm just going to be putting it inside, hot gluing where they connect, and then sliding it back inside the bead. And then finally, I added a candle that I got from Walmart, and then I'm putting some greenery just around. This is lamb's ear from Michael. It's part of a garland, but you can definitely use the lamb's ear from Walmart, and it's two for $2. Thanks for watching guys, we hope you enjoyed today's video. Make sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you can be notified every time we upload a new video.